Hey there fellow Planeswalkers, it's Steve for Collector Mania, and we're continuing on with our Dominaria Commander deck techs. Uh, today we're going to do things a little bit differently, we're actually going to focus on Popper. Um, so Shauna Sisse's Legacy is, or what we have here, is a great Voltron Commander slash Go Wide Commander, so a really weird mix in my opinion. I've kind of built the deck around just throwing some auras on Shauna and then just gathering a giant team of tokens and attacking. Um, and then, you know, add in a few other hexproof creatures into the deck with uh, so a little bit more aura goodness there. <laughs> um, so overall, I think it's going to be great. Um, I This will probably be the third or fourth deck I built for Popper, so, you know, Popper community, let me know if I'm doing a good job here, of course. But with that, let's break into the deck. So, of course, we've got a Glade Cover Scout. I mean, this is just a boggle go-to card, so just makes 100% sense here. I've got a Hopeful Eidolon, so I tried to fit as many Bestow creatures in here as I could. I think the enchantment numbers, as you'll see when we get to the auras, will really matter, plus the recursion with that really matters as well. And then we've got a Soul Warden, some life gain. Thraben Inspector, there's not a whole lot of card draw in these colors in Popper, so anything that'll draw us a card, usually I'll throw it in, and this is definitely a pretty good card for that. Anointed Priest, so not only a token itself, but also a creature and something that'll gain you a bunch of life as well. And Leaf Crown Dryad, so I absolutely love this creature. I mean, being able to give your commander plus two, plus two in reach, and then when your commander, for whatever reason, dies, it becomes a creature on its own is amazing. Quisali Pride Mage, of course, that Exalted trigger, and a little bit of removal as well. Selesnia Evangel, so a really good way to make a, an army slowly. <laughs> then we've got a Ledge Walker, of course, another Bogle. Ten at night comes with two guys on one stick, so pretty good. Or a Gnarled, so this will be a lot of fun. So two Kellis and a green. Uh, it's power creatures with power less than Aura Gnarled's power can't block it. Aura Gnarled gets plus one plus one for each aura on the battlefield, so this could become really a, a secondary threat, really. Aura Mancer, some recursion. Iron Can Iron Crad Slayer, another recursion card. I've got a Jungle Born Pioneer, so. I'm not sure how much uh, like color matters in this format, but being able to make an off-color creature might be kind of cool, especially because that off-color creature is hexproof, so could be something you could suit up. Monk Idealist, some more enchantment recursion. Then I've got a Nyxborn Wolf. Yeah, plus three, plus one is pretty good. Ober Observant Alcyad. Uh so two colors and a white, bestow, vigilance, uh, plus two, plus two in vigilance if it's bestowed. That's an uh, amazing enchantment right there. Sacred Wolf, something to put some enchantments on. You have my Enchantress, so plus one, plus one for each enchantment on the battlefield. Ambassador Oak, so just a 3-3 that gives you a 1-1 elf. Jade Guardian, so hexproof, and then enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target elf you control, which will be him. <laughs> I've got a Living Totem, so I like this because it's got Convoke and we are definitely going wide, so we should be able to cast this guy a little bit earlier than normal. Primal Hunt Beast, another Hexproof guy. Bramble Anima Elemental, this is a key card in the strategy. I mean, three colors, two green, whenever an aura becomes attached to Bramble Ele Elemental, create two 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens, and it's a 4-4 four, four on its own, so it's just a beast. And then we've got a Griffin Dreamfinder, so three colors, two white, flying, when Griffin Dreamfinder enters the battlefield, return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So another good recursion creature, plus a 1-4 flyer, I mean, that can block a lot of huge threats and potentially become something that we suit up as well. I've got an Overgrown Arbosaur, so 3 colors, 2 green. Enrage, whenever it's dealt damage, you get a 1-1 Sapperling. Rock's Bodyguard, a little bit of uh, a little bit more Exalted and a little bit of life gain. I've got Rumbleback Rhino, so another Hexproof, 3-4. Sensor Splicer comes in and gives you a Golem. I've got Totem Horror... Totem Guide Heart Beast, <laughs> four colors and a white antelope, two five. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an aura card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. So a little bit of uh, aura search there. Uh, Humbler of Mortals, so four colors, two green. Whenever Humbler, Humbler of Mortals or another enchantment enters the battlefield under control, creatures you control gain trample until end of turn. So that's pretty important with our commander. Plus itself is a five five, so that's not bad at all. Voice of Province, so a 3-3 flyer that puts a 1-1 token on the battlefield. 
small splicer, so another splicer creating golems for us. And then a walker of the grove. Uh, six colors, two green. When it dies, it gives you a 4-4. Four, four. You can also evoke it, so that's pretty cool too. Now we're breaking into our artifacts here. We've got a relic, a progenitus, so some graveyard removal plus a little bit of card draw. Uh, Commander Sphere, a little bit of ramp and card draw. And then Bequeathal, so this is a enchantment that we want to throw on something that is disposable. So when it dies you get to draw two cards, so that's pretty cool. Cartouche of Solidarity, so this is not only buffing whatever we put it on, but it's also creating us a token. Ethereal Armor, this is a key part of the strategy as well. I mean, you throw this on Shauna and have a, a few auras on the battlefield, not only is she getting plus one plus one for all the creatures, she's getting plus one plus one for all the enchantments. And with the way our deck is built, that should stack up twice sometimes, so that's pretty cool. Hyena Umbra, you know, totem armor can never be uh, underappreciated. <laughs> Aetherweb, so I included this card just because I wanted something else to kind of be able to block flying creatures, so the fact that this can also block shadow creatures is kind of cool. I don't know how prevalent they are on the format, but there's always that chance. Bonds of Faith, uh, I've used this card in Standard before. <laughs> it was actually a lot of fun then. Um, since our commander is a human, we'll most likely just be slapping this on her, but if we need to, we can also just put it on like a demon or you know merfolk or whatever we need to to stop it from attacking us or blocking. We've got Fists of the Ironwood, so not only does it give our commander trample, but it also gives us two 1-1 one, one green sapperling tokens. Ancestral Mask, this is going to be a bonkers draw. I mean, getting plus two, plus two for each other enchantment on the battlefield is going to be ridiculous with Shauna. Armadillo Cloak. Asha's Favor. So this is actually one of the one of my favorite popper auras that I've found so far. So two colors and a white enchanted creature has flying first strike and vigilance. I mean, that's a lot of keyword abilities for three. Cartouche of Strength, so not only a little bit of removal, but also a plus one, plus one, and tramp, champ, ah, trample. <laughs> Can't talk. And I've got a Patriarch Ward, so two colors and a white. Uh, enters the battlefield, choose a color, it becomes protection from that color, and then you get to draw a card as well, so that's really cool. Shield of the Oversoul, so this is a automatic, yeah, <laughs> include in here. I mean, you slap this on your commander, and you're probably just going to win the game. I mean, indestructible and flying. There's not a whole lot of exile removal, especially because she's hexproof, and there's really no board wipes, so <laughs> I think you, like I said, just win the game if you get this on Shauna. And Sigil of the Nine Gods, so now that plus one plus one for each creature actually stacks twice, so that's absolutely ridiculous. Snake Umbra, a little bit of uh, card draw plus totem armor. Cloud Shift. Um, with things like Thraven Inspector and like the guy that puts elves out and you know all of our token makers, this is just a good include. Druid's Deliverance, so prevent all combat damage and populate. Sundering Growth, destroy an artifact or enchantment then populate. Forsake the Worldly, still one of my favorite cards, I mean exile target artifact or enchantment and also has cycling, that's pretty good. Uh, Fortify, since we are going wide, I figured something like this would be pretty useful in the late game, especially if you have a giant army. Just give all your creatures plus two plus zero, and then if you have happen to have like the enchantment guy that gives uh, trample to all your creatures, if you play an enchantment, I mean they, they just go wonderfully together. Kill shot, a little bit of removal. Group born defenses, since we are going wide once again, having something like this is great. Plus with our commander, that's great as well. I mean, yeah. Rampant growth. Cultivate. Search for tomorrow. Breath of Life, I'm always surprised that this is actually originally a common and it's in white. Like, <laughs> return target, target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield for three and a white. I mean, that's not bad, really. Corsair's Accord, so six costs and you get two three threes unless you have some other better, to better token to populate. Blossoming Sands, so we're breaking into our lands here. Desert of the Domino, so cycle lands are key here. I think being able to draw later in the game when you just are drawing dead with lands is important. Another cycle land. A colony garden, of course, a uh, land that gives us a token. Secluded step, cycle land. Uh, Sajiri step, I think this card is awesome. I mean, for a turn it gives our commander protection from a color of our choice, so I mean, if we need to finish somebody off, we just call whatever color we need to to get through. Selesnia Guildgate. Selesnia Sanctuary. Slippery Karst, another Cycle Land, Tranquil Expanse, Tranquil Thicket, and then I think it's 14 Forests and 11 Plains. 
Um, that is the deck, so I hope you guys have enjoyed. I look forward to doing a few more of these popper deck techs, uh, popper commander deck techs to be specific. Let me know if I did a good job here. Like I said, I'm not too familiar with the format. I'm just kind of getting into it now with our popper to power series. Um, I honestly had a blast building this deck, and I think this will be an awesome commander even outside of popper. I mean, it's very interesting. Like, I, I. I think the first time I read it I didn't realize that she was hexproof, and now that I've realized that she's hexproof it just kind of turns everything on its head. Um, so anyway, like I said, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you next time.